Tom Campbell here. I and MBT Events hope you like this video. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account or through a one-time donation. It would be very much appreciated. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Hello, Tom. Thanks for joining us again for Tom Campbell Answers Your Questions. I've got a question from Andy. I watched a lecture you gave on YouTube in 2011 in which you describe an extension to the delayed choice double slit experiment. You describe the idea of sealing up the results of the experiment, namely the path information, along with the screen results into separate envelopes. Some of these you would later look at only the screen results but destroy the detector data, burn it and dissolve the ashes in water, as you may recall. I'd like to ask, and this is possibly a naive question on this, would nature allow you to get away with actually looking at the screen results and sealing up without peeking only the path information? In other words, would the screen bands or interference show you which envelopes you were going to destroy and which you were going to open? in the future? Uh, no, that is not a possibility. It doesn't work like that. For those listeners who may be a little confused, in a double slit experiment, you have um, what he's calling path is the which way data. That's the data that describes which, which slit did the particle go through. Remember, we're sending individual particles one at a time through two slits. They have an equal probability of going through either slit, but they can only go through one or the other. So when we look and see which one did they go through, then that's the which way data or the path data. That's what he was talking about. The other data he was talking about, the screen data, that's the result of, of the uh, electrons who go through the slit, then they, they hit a screen. And we look at the pattern they make on the screen, and they're going to make one of two patterns. They're going to make either an interference pattern, or they're going to make a uh, what we call a particle pattern, like a particle pattern or a wave pattern, it's sometimes called, or an interference pattern and a uh, decoherent pattern. Sometimes the, the interference pattern is called a coherent pattern. So there's lots of words that you might hear that, that, that mean these things, but Anyway, that's the idea. Okay. And to make this a, a uh, this is just a thought experiment going on. It's not one that's, that's done. But uh, if you have the which way data, the path data, then you will always get a particle pattern. If you don't have any which way data, then you will always get an interference pattern. Okay, that's the basic result of the double slit experiment. Now, if you have done this experiment a bunch of times and you have the screen pattern, whatever that is, it could be particle, could be a, you know, could be a wave pattern, but you have whatever the screen results are and you have what the uh, which way data, either you collected it or you didn't collect it. So now you have a bunch of cases like that. Okay, now these two are connected. If you have the which way data and you don't know what it is, you just collected it from your experiment, but it was automatically sealed up in an envelope without anybody looking at it. So now it's a mystery. What is that which way data? Did it show what slit it went through or did it not? In other words, did we collect which way data or did we not collect which way data? Which is it? So if we look at it and we see, ah, look, there's which way data, we've got it. Now, what do we know? We know that that screen data has to be a particle pattern, just a big lump behind each slit, not an interference pattern. So one, if you look at one, that determines the other. We know what the other has to be. So if you did the opposite, if you just looked at the screen data, kept all your other envelopes shut, and you look at the screen data and you say, oh, look, it's an interference pattern. 
you automatically know that if you look at the path data, there is no path data. There is no which way data because we saw that there was an interference pattern. Therefore, there is no which way data. So it's set up like that. That's the logical connection between those two. Okay, now, uh, so you can't look at one, which then still allows you to, to change the other one. You know, once you look at one, the other one's fixed. And it doesn't matter which one you look at first, if they're both sealed up and they're, they're, you don't have any idea what, what any of them are. Okay, so that was the, uh, I think that's the answer to his question, is that those two have to come in a logical pair. Whichever one you look at first, that will determine what's in the other one. Okay, so that's how the experiment works. That should clear up his question on that. It's the observer, is that right? That's the, that's the key in it. Yeah, well, the observer is the one that observes the which way data. That's the observer looks and sees as it go through this slit or does it go through that slit? Of course, it's really not an observer with his eyeball in there. It's a, it's a, a very sensitive instrument that makes that detection or it's a, a, an entangled particle and the, the one entangled path makes that, saves that information uh, on one, with one part of the entangled pair and the other part goes through the double slits. There's several ways of doing this, but Yes, that's, uh, that's the observer effect. Okay, if the observer looks and actually can tell, oh, it went through the slit. Well, now that's where it's been observed. And that means that we have a particle there. You see, before, it's not really a particle. It's just a, a potential particle. People might call it a metaparticle. It's not really a particle. It's just a, a probability function. There is no particle until a measurement is made. When the measurement is made, you've got a particle. So when they measure which slit the particle went through, that makes that potential particle turn into a physical particle. And as soon as you have a physical particle, it can't do anything but travel in a straight line until it hits a screen. It can't rearrange itself into an interference pattern. But as long as it is a potential particle, not an actual particle, and you don't make that, you know, you don't look at it at the slit, nobody looks at the slit to see where the particle is, then that particle does, as it goes through the slit, I'm calling it a particle, that, that meta particle, you know, as it gets to the slit, does not turn into a physical particle there because of the measurement, it just stays a meta particle. And now that particle, because that meta particle, can arrange itself any way it likes on that screen because it's not really a physical particle. It's just a probability. And probability is not constrained by Newton's second law about traveling in a straight line unless interacted on by an external force. I think it's his second law, but anyway, one of those laws of Newton. That goes back about 50 years in my education. I, not really sure anymore, but in any case, so that's the idea. If you cause that particle to become physical at the slits to, what do they call it? That the wave function collapse, collapses, the wave function being a, a probabilistic function, collapses to the particle. Well, now it can only act like a particle, but as long as it is just a wave function or just probability, there isn't any constraint on where it might land. And it just happens to land in a way that keeps quantum optics and optics from conflicting with each other. So that's why it lands as it does. It lands, it puts itself into an interference pattern because then optics and quantum optics come up with the same result. So now our virtual reality does not have an inconsistency in it does not have a, a glitch in the, in the logic. So it's a way that the, the rendering engine can render our reality such as to not have logical inconsistencies within the reality. That's why it puts itself in that, in that interference pattern. So that's what's going on there. 
Thank you, Tom. I'm sure that answered your question, Andy. Thank you. I and MBT Events hope you liked this video. We will continue to post videos for free on my YouTube channel, but please understand, these videos are expensive to produce. They represent many thousands of hours of production and editing, as well as all the necessary audiovisual equipment, computers, and software. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account or through a one-time donation. It would be very much appreciated. The links are in the description below. Thank you.